hello everyone welcome back to our channel good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time and locations you'll be watching this video yes my dear viewers i am back again with another update so guys i have a video here i would like we all to watch but before then if you're meeting my channel for the very first time you're highly welcome please kindly do well to like share and subscribe leave your thought on the comment section and let us know what you think about this video and i will see you towards on a total and indefinite shutdown of the nation within 14 working days or 21 days from today until steps are taken by the government to address the excruciating mass suffering and the impoverishment being experienced around the going back on a total and indefinite shutdown of the nation within 14 working days or 21 days from today until steps are taken by the government to address the excruciating mass suffering and the impoverishment being experienced around the country to commence a two-day nationwide warning strike on Tuesday and Wednesday, 5th and 6th of September 2023 to demonstrate our readiness for the indefinite strike later in the the engagement between labor and the federal government it i mean does it look like things are broken down between both parties in terms of the negotiation that you have entered into in the past weeks you will recall that after our nationwide protests you know there were promises from the national assembly that asked for one week and uh, after our meeting one-on-one -on -one with mr president for him to restructure a team you know negotiating for government between that time and now no communication so you can see that negotiation has not even commenced talk less of you know breaking down so that's where we are there's no communication nobody talks to us you know uh, it, it does seem to be a monologue we are talking to ourselves and they are talking to themselves we can't continue this way three months after the removal of first subsidy and the excruciating effect of this policy to Nigerians. So, uh, I thought that there were supposed to be some consultations, some committees are supposed to meet and look at the way forward. Um, is it that they're not talking to you at all, or uh, you just feel that there is a stalling on the side of the federal government? There were committees set up at inception when we wanted to embark on a strike. The committees couldn't meet for almost six weeks when we started pressing on the issue for us to do a nationwide rally for Nigerians to know, you know, that nothing is happening. So before that rally, you know, there were attempts for the committee to hold meetings with us in two very occasions, you know, there was no seriousness attached to the meeting. And it was at that point that we asked that, you know, the composition of the committee should be enhanced so that people who are not too busy with state matters you know could take part in the committee especially on part of the government you know and it was on that basis that we equally met with the senate president we met with president of the federal republic of nigeria and between that time and now you know uh, not no communication that is the true situation now you have decided to go on a two-day warning strike but you have also hinted that there will be an indefinite strike action later in the month uh this is in view of uh the court the, the, the federal government going to the uh, the industrial court uh to stop the nigerian labor from doing any of such well i don't think the the matter has anything to do with court the two days action are in two prongs. The first point there is the takeover of the National Secretariat of the National Union of Road Transport Employees by people, you know, claiming that they, they have authority of the villa to take over the leadership. And to us in the trade union movement, it is unfortunate, it is even worse than, you know, the queue in Niger for you to violently use the police to take over you know an elected government of an industrial union and we have given the police 48 hours to pull out and allow the union to resolve their crisis 
or the NLC, which is the Umbrella Union, or even other organs, Minister of Labor, or all the organs set by law to take care of it and not the police. That is the first step. And the second step is, you know, is <clears throat> towards the uh, industrial action over the issue of uh, refusal of the state to engage labor and to solve the problem and the continued suffering of Nigerian workers. You know, to give it as a signal, we have given a long, you know, a notice up to the middle of towards the third week of September. But uh, towards that end, we had to give a signal, a warning signal that after this period, we are going to embark on a nation and we are going to express that right, you know, of a worker to the, to wake up and say he will not go to work. It's a right that you can legislate into existence or out of existence, that people have the right to work or not to work. So we'll express it, you know, from the way you are saying, we we'll decide, we we'll find out whether anybody who decides not to go to work will be arrested or will be imprisoned. Well, let's look at it this way. Now, so uh, with all what the federal government says it is doing, for example, 5 billion naira has been earmarked. The Minister of Finance today has said, Two billion out of that money has been disbursed already. Is the labor okay with that arrangement? And they're saying more is to come. What is that five billion naira for? Is it for for what? Is it for we, we, we don't have information when the federal government is giving a location to state governments, you know, on and on. So how does that concern us? The federal government continued allocation to states, whether it's five billion. What is 10 billion? <clears throat> How does that concern labor? Is there any agreement around that for what it is meant for? Or well, what one, will, one will imagine, Mr. Jairo, that your members are all over the country and they will benefit from the disbursement how, of this money. How, how are they, are they going to benefit? In a state where you have 3 million people, you know, and you send 5 billion naira, do you think anybody can get 1,000 naira? I don't think we should be bothered with that calculation. It doesn't add water. You know, even if you have to take it to give it to the poor. And the National Bureau of Statistics have said that one, 103 million Nigerians are multidimensionally poor in Nigeria. So you calculate 185 billion and you release to them and give them maybe 1,300. Is that what you are talking? Is that how the Nigerian state looks at its citizens? But, but look at it this way. Um, so, clarify for us. Is it that you do not trust the state government? Or you think that that money that was earmarked is insufficient? Or that the idea of the palliative is that totally is not, out of place? That, what exactly is money, the point of labor? That, that money is not for us. We are negotiating with government. We are trying to look at the effects, you know, of the subsidy removal. And we have not arrived on five... Five billion for you to share one one thousand to people. You know, if government is giving uh, money to the state governors for them to share, that's not within the the mandate we have in terms of negotiating with the Nigerian go government or the committee they have set up. And you should be aware that almost on monthly basis, government is sending money to state governments. So we should not bother ourselves with this issue of the gave state governors five billion. You know, is five billion for palliative? Is five billion for who? You know, how around will five billion go? Is it shared capitalism? So, so Mr. Ajaro, from the labor point of view, that five billion is not non-issue. That five billion is out of place. Is that the stance of labor? That five billion, we don't know what it's all about. There was you do no not agree with the five billion. You do not there think that no, the federal government should discuss no it at all. The federal government and the governor discuss about the five billion and they are giving to them. To us as labor, there was no conversation around five billion on what it is meant for. So we can't even pay any state governor that decides to fix it in a fixed deposit account. So let me ask you, uh, Mr. Ajayo, with what is on the ground right now, as far as the palliative measures, uh, subsidy regime, and what is the position of labor? Have you agreed that it's okay for the federal government to remove it? Are you are you are you on the same page with the federal government? Well, you you are you are part you are in this country that there was no consultation around that, but federal government has removed it. 
So it's not a question of whether we agreed or not, because we never agreed to that. You know, that, that any country should run without subsidizing the life of people in whatever guise, whether it is farmers, whether it is the energy or whatever. But they have done it. And when you do it, you don't reduce us to mere technicism, maybe you give us 10,000 10, for one for three months and leave people to die. You know, that's not the issue. You know, we have to sit down and look at some measures, you know, that will cushion the effect or that will substitute the suffering, you know, of Nigerians. So by the time you say you are giving state governors five, five billion, what does that translate to? So, if so, share so and, uh, Mr. President, give us an understanding of labor's own way of going about this. What is your own blueprint? in handling these cases because it doesn't look like the federal government is capable it doesn't look like the federal government is doing the right thing it doesn't look like the go federal government is knowledgeable enough in the eye of labor in handling this situation that is what it appears to be from the position of the labor is that it and what will be the labor's own blueprint in handling this situation so let's look at this this way you know uh, like i said if we share that five billion or even the five trucks of uh, rice or grain. You, many people may not get one cup or half cup of rice. If you share the five billion, many people probably within the working class or you know, the people who are the poor of the poor, the poorest of the poor, the wretched of the ex, many people may not get 1,500. Now, is that the palliative? But if we take this money, and then like some of the suggestions we are looking at, like the CNG, you know, uh, uh, gas, and we get buses in the states, I'm just giving you an example because of the question you asked. You get maybe in every state, maybe 100 buses. For every day, a worker moves from his uh, house to the office and comes back with a reduced transportation rate. He may save 1,000 naira a day. And if he tries that for 28 days, or even 20 days, he may be saving about 20,000 on transportation alone. That's a policy. And then that will help even the farmer, you know, who moves his goods and services from one point to the other. This time around, we are not no longer talking of workers alone. We are talking of an action state taken by the Nigerian state to reduce the excruciating effect of the subsidy remover. That alone. And by the time you do it nationwide, with these vehicles, that their prices have been reduced to a barest minimum, you will see that people can move from one place to the other and fend for themselves. Not up to 20 million Nigerians are even on government paid employment. Other people in the public sector, sorry, in the private sector, other people in the informal sector, how are they going to are they going to benefit? You know, and this is a, these are some of the areas who can meet and converse around it. That's why we are saying, even the fact that some governors are saying that it is a loan, if it is a loan to the governors, some of them may not bother to take such loan. So that is the situation. There are various ways we could have conversed, and every Nigerian, it will impact on them. We can look at even the issue of conversion for people that use private vehicles. And when they convert their, their vehicles, those that fill their tanks with 40,000 at a go will be filling it by 20,000 at a go. And then they will be selling close to 20,000. And not where somebody will give you 1,000 or 1,500. We can think, we can converse around these issues. We can think outside the box. But when people appropriate to themselves a monopoly of knowledge, then those are the kind of challenges we are going to continue. When we have institutionalized the attitude of sharing money, you know, then that's where we are. Uh, Mr. Jairo, so let's bring this home quickly. Now, for the interest of the Nigerian people, uh, what will be right in your own view? That the government must, because a warning strike means if you do not do this, we will go ahead to go uh, on a larger, on a full scale. It means that labor will go on the streets, if I'm, a, if I'm right, and you will shut down every aspect of the nigerian economy where your members are handling uh, that to me looks like an extreme situation you will do that for two days and if the government is not listening you will do that indefinitely is that what is happening now if that is well, the case that means that 
adding to the worrying state of the economy, you are shutting down the polity. Well, I don't understand what you mean by extreme case. I would expect channels not to, you know, air anything on that day. As a mark of protest, to what is happening, to protest the effect on channels, to protest the effect on the workers, you know, of such areas. That is what we are going to do. We, may cons we are going to consider whether we'll be on the streets, like you mentioned, or whether we should be in our houses. Even in the NLC office, from even today, none of us will be around because we can't come to work. And we have been experiencing this for a very long time. You know, people cannot live from one place to the other. So on that day, it's going to be phenomenal. You know, it's going to be a symbol that this is a day, you know, that we couldn't afford to go to work, no matter what you are paid. And these two days is going to be so. So uh, I don't know what you mean by extreme situation, in this regard, so, so what I mean, that, I mean, when you're saying suggesting that channels were, I mean, uh, that the channel's television is in solidarity with the Nigerian people, and okay. we've okay. always done that. We're on the side of the people, and of course, we always uh, constitutionally take the plight of the Nigerian people to the government and hold government accountable. That has been uh, the fulcrum of our operations, and that has been the pillar of our vision and mission on this channel. So we've been doing that. But then we will go out and make sure that the Nigerian people get the right information, even on that day, as a solidarity for our nation. But the question I'm asking is that the Nigerian nation is already in a dire situation. If you show that aspect of the economy or aspect of our polity, it then means that things will go wrong. And that's what I'm saying. It might be extreme. Things are already bad. Uh, is there any other or possibility of uh, uh, any options other than uh, shutting out everything like you planned? This, this will get worse for which people. The economy is done for which people. Those of us that can't move from one point to the other. I think you should get it from that perspective. The resources of the state, who is it meant for? Is it not for the people? And the people are not receiving it. It's good we look at it from that point of view. You are telling me that the economy of Nigeria is down. If you must treat it as being down, then it then means the workers are down. They can't go out. And I think it's part of the responsibility of the media, which happen to be my primary constituency, will be to ask the government that three months after the removal of first subsidy, what have you done? In fact, this conversation should have been for those, the operators of the state, you know, to explain to Nigerians what they have been expecting Nigerian people, you know, what they have been expecting the masses, you know, to be doing in these past three months. Why it should be, even some of them should go into the aspect of even demolishing houses.